All right, now that we have Notepad++ and ZAMP installed, we are ready to start coding. So let's go to drive C and let's look for a folder called ZAMP. And then in there, we look for htdocs. If you're using a different uh, server than ZAMP, this might be the www folder. So let's open that up. So all websites that you create from now on using PHP must be in this folder, otherwise they won't work. So in here, let's uh, create a new folder because these are other websites that I've been working on. So let's uh, name one called tutorial. This will be the website we'll be working on. So in here, let's create one PHP file. Let's open up uh, Notepad++. Okay, if there's any documents open, just close them with that. All right, so in here, the way PHP works is you type the opening PHP tag and the closing PHP tag. This can be put anywhere in your document and PHP will process that information. So this white space in between, this is the opening tag and the closing PHP tag. So the white space doesn't matter, I can do this and it's exactly the same thing. So in between here, let me type a function called PHP info, open close bracket. So let me uh, save this file. So we have to save this file in that very folder. Well, let's go there, C, uh, ZAMP, htdocs, and we named our folder tutorial. So let's save our page as index.php. Uh, so make sure it says .php and not .html, otherwise it won't work. Make sure it says all file types and hit save. Okay, so immediately you see the colors change here. That's why Notepad++ is actually better than the ordinary Notepad. It even gives you suggestions when you're about to type something, which is pretty cool. So let's save this and try to run this in Firefox. Let's, so let me say launch in Firefox. If you don't have that option, if you're using a different text editor, just go to your folder and right click on the file and say open with Firefox like that. So let me start Firefox uh, right there. Let me open with Firefox. All right, there we go. And we see nothing. Okay, so because the processor, the ZAMP processor is not on, so let's open the ZAMP control panel which you can get from your start menu, just type ZAMP. Make sure these two processes are running. Usually they are, here they're already running, but let me stop them. So you start the Apache. Apache is actually the web server. MySQL is the database, which we don't r actually need right now. So we just start the Apache. So once that is done, even if we refresh, nothing happens because to activate the server, we have to replace everything from htdocs here all the way back, we replace it with the text localhost slash enter. And you see this. So if you see this kind of thing, then uh, you installed PHP correctly and everything is working just fine. Now the thing is uh, this localhost, when you load your website onto the internet, this localhost will be replaced by your uh, website name like www.website.com will be replaced, uh, will replace this localhost. It's called localhost now because it's on your local machine. All right, so you make sure every time you type localhost, then the folder and the file, just like that. So now let's try to save this file as an HTML file. So let me, let me type some HTML in here. Let me just say, welcome to my page, okay? Let me uh, remove the white space like that, okay? like that. So this is exactly the same thing. It's going to work if I refresh the page. I see welcome to my page and I see PHP stuff here. So in this way, you can mix PHP with your HTML on the same page without problems. This is exactly what PHP was designed for, to mix seamlessly with your HTML and boost its uh, capabilities. All right, now let's try and save this file as a HTML. Let's say index.html and see what the difference is. If I try to run this in uh, Firefox, and let me replace this with uh, localhost as well, localhost, enter. And what I discover is that the PHP stuff doesn't come through. Why is this? It's because the PHP processor only looks for the .php files. If you save your file as something else here, it will ignore that file. It will think it's just HTML and no PHP in there. So it will just serve that file to the user as it is. If you go to the view page source, you see that the PHP info is served up as text and not actually processed. Whereas in here, if you right click and say view page source, you see something entirely different. Look at that. All this is uh, processed by PHP to give you this information just from that one uh, function. 
All right, so now that we have all this set up, we are ready to make our first document. So I'll see you in the next video.